Hello and welcome back to Neo Psychology with me, your teacher, Mr. Neo, the channel where I teach online psychology lessons for my wonderful students. Today we're doing the final lesson on the memory unit, lesson nine, improving the accuracy of eyewitness testimony, cognitive interview. Let's get started. The standard police interview involves the policeman doing most of the talking, asking specific questions that require specific answers. They may also ask leading questions that contaminate a witness's memory. These techniques disrupt the natural process of searching through memory, making memory retrieval ineffective. Luckily for the police though, psychologists have developed an interview technique that arguably produces more accurate responses. This is known as the cognitive interview. We have seen that eyewitness testimony may lack accuracy, yet such accuracy is vital to police and the courts. So psychologists have turned their attention to finding ways of improving the accuracy of eyewitness testimonies based on sound psychological evidence. This includes the cognitive interview, what psychologists believe is one of the most successful contributions psychologists have made to society. Here we go, two learning objectives today. We're gonna to have a look at this cognitive interview and then we're going to discuss and evaluate it. Let's start with learning objective one, the cognitive interview. Fisher and Geiselman in 1992 claimed that eyewitness testimony could be improved if the police used techniques based on psychological insights into how memory works. Cognitive interview uses four main techniques to help eyewitnesses to retrieve more accurate memories. One, reinstate the context. Two, report everything. Three, reverse the order. Four, change perspective. Let's have a look at number one, mental reinstatement of original context. The witness returns to the original crime scene in their mind and imagines the environment. For example, the weather, what they could see, and their emotions, what they felt. This is based on the concept of context-dependent forgetting, retrieval failure. Cues from the context may trigger recall. Two, reporting everything. Witnesses are encouraged to include every detail of an event, even if it seems irrelevant or the witness is not confident about it. Seemingly trivial details could be important and may trigger other memories. Three, reverse the order. Events are recalled in a different order, for example, from the end back to the beginning, or from the middle to the beginning. This prevents people basing their descriptions on their expectations of how the event must have happened, rather than the actual events. It also prevents dishonesty. It's harder to produce an untruthful account if it has to be reversed. And then finally, four, change perspective. Witnesses recall the incident from other people's perspective. How would it have appeared to another witness or to the other or to the perpetrator? This prevents the influence of expectations and schema on recall. Schema and packages of information developed through experience. They generate a framework for interpreting incoming information. You would have learned about that in the approach's cognitive approach. Okay, cognitive interview. What is cognitive interview? It is a method of interviewing witnesses to help them retrieve more accurate memories. It uses four main techniques, all based on well-established psychological knowledge of human memory. Reinstate the context, report everything, reverse the order, and change perspective. Here's an application question, cognitive interview. A police officer trained in using the cognitive interview is helping a witness to recall more information about a mugging. Eventually, the police officer gives the witness the following instructions. Please tell me as much as you can remember about what you saw. Please do not leave anything out, even if you think they are just unimportant small details. Two questions, one, which of the four main techniques of the cognitive interview is being used in the above statement? And two, for the three other techniques, write down the exact wording of the instructions the police officer might give to the witness. So, you've got to put yourself in the police officer's shoes, write three questions based on the other three techniques. Give that a go now, please pause the, pause the video, write the answers down. Here we go. Number one. The statement relates to the report everything technique of the cognitive interview. Now, for the three other techniques, write down the exact word in the instructions the police officer might give the witness. So, if it was reinstate the context, 
They might say, I want you to go back in your mind's eye to what happened that day. Picture the scene. What is the weather like? What time of day is it? Can you see other people who are there? How do you feel emotionally? Happy? Sad? For reverse the order, now I want you to think about the very last thing you can remember about the event. I want you to remember it backwards. What happened just before that? And that. Keep going all the way back to the first thing you can remember. And then finally, change perspective. Picture the scene in your mind's eye. Can you see anyone else there? I want you to put yourself in their shoes. Imagine what the situation looked like from their point of view. What can you see now? And that is the cognitive interview. Can you identify one thing you learned about the cognitive interview? Why do you think learning about the cognitive interview is important? Who is, this who is this information useful to? What was the hardest part to understand about the cognitive interview? And what questions has this raised for you? If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Maybe I or maybe another viewer will be able to answer it. And that's learning objective one, done. We are on to the discussion and evaluation of cognitive interview. Let's have a look. What are some of the strengths and limitations of cognitive interview? One strength is research support for the effectiveness of cognitive interview. A meta-analysis by Cohenken et al. in 1999 combined data from 55 studies comparing the cognitive interview with the standard police interview. The cognitive interview produced an average of 41% more correct information than the standard interview. Only four studies showed no difference. This shows that the cognitive interview is effective in helping witnesses recall information that is available but not accessible. So that's a massive strength. That's a big strength of supporting evidence showing how it is useful, where it's useful for those in police. Secondly, a limitation of the cognitive interview is that it is time consuming. Police are reluctant to use the cognitive interview because it takes up more time than the standard police interview. For example, to establish rapport and allow the witness to relax. The cognitive interview also requires special training, but many forces do not have the resources to provide more than a few hours training. This suggests that the complete cognitive interview is not realistic for police officers to use and it might be better to focus on just a few key elements. So that's obviously a limitation, right? Time consuming. Finally, quality rather than quantity of recall. A criticism of the cognitive interview is that the effectiveness is often measured in terms of quantity of information recalled rather than quality. Cohenken et al. not only found an increase in the amount of correct information generated, but also an increase in the amount of incorrect information, false positives. This means that the results of this procedure need to be retreated with caution, as it does not necessarily guarantee accuracy. So it gives you more information, but not necessarily accurate information. So that is a limitation. So, can you summarize each evaluative point into your own words? Can you summarize the evaluative point into exactly 10 words if you want to challenge yourself? And that's the learning objective two, discuss and evaluate the cognitive interview. We had a look at a couple strengths and limitations regarding that. Right, plenary, mind map. Can you create a mind map about everything learned in this memory unit? Ensure to include both AO1 and AO3 knowledge for each of the nine lessons within this unit. Otherwise, that was the lesson. That was lesson, uh, lesson nine, improving the accuracy of eyewitness testimony, cognitive interview, and that's the end of the memory unit. Hope that was helpful. Well done, my neo-psychologists. Good job today. Great job today. God bless and peace. I'm feeling like Will. I feel like a prince. I'm feeling myself. I'm loaded with bills. Because I was not blessed with no Uncle Phil. Don't know how it feels. I wanted to flex. They told me to chill. I'm making a flip. My life is a flick. Now load up the flip. Yeah.